Thank you for inviting me, Sukan, and uh, thank you for such a good meeting. So far, at least, I, I have enjoyed the analysis, and I think I learned one or two things as well. I'm often asked, why do you support Palestine so much? Um, quite often, when I was a student, uh, people used to think that I was Palestinian rather than an Iraqi, <laughs> including him. Um, <clears throat> And I think there are a number of reasons. One is obviously emotional. Ever since I was a child, my mom and sisters and brother used to tell me about Palestine and the great injustice that has befallen the Palestinian people. And some of these things you start learning more and more about, and they sink deeper and deeper in your, in your consciousness. Uh, so there is that emotional attachment which, uh, which shall never disappear. But aside from that, as I became more, <clears throat> more politically conscious, I, be, I came to realize that uh, the question of Palestine is really central to the struggle of oppressed people across the world. <clears throat> One of the reasons is that it's such a small population have been resisting the mightiest of forces for so many decades. Uh, one of the comrades said 66 years. <clears throat> Since the end of World War I, the Palestinian people have taken up genuine resistance and struggle against colonial rule and simultaneously against Zionist encroachment over their homeland, Palestine. <clears throat> and relentlessly, this great heroic people have resisted, resisted, and they continue to resist. All forms of resistance. Don't underestimate the psychological, the artistic uh, expressions of the Palestinian people. Mix with any Palestinian family, and you realize there is something unique and special about such a great, <coughs> great people. I learned a lot. And as I grew older uh, in Iraq, uh, I saw our own struggle of the Iraqi people for uh, independence, for democracy, for socialism. I'm a socialist. I'm proud of it as well. I saw the struggle of the Palestinian people as inherently linked with the struggle of the Iraqi people. And generation after generation of people who struggled throughout the Arab world, throughout the Middle East, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, the question of Palestine and the struggle of the Palestinian people became fundamental to all politically conscious people who resisted imperialist rule, who resisted local dictatorships. Local dictatorships are important, and I must stress that. Because the struggle against imperialism, I think, is completely organically linked to the struggle against the domestic oppressors. Imperialism cannot be destroyed without an integral, organic struggle against the local despots. We don't need to praise a local despot to show that we are anti-imperialist. The two struggles always, always go together. Why? Because imperialism manifests itself not only through direct occupations, direct uh, armed onslaughts, but it also manifests itself through the local reactionaries, the domestic despots, who oppress their own people, who crush their own people, and allow imperialism to have a field's day. They, their links are integral, are organic. They feed each other. Obviously, the dominant force is always imperialism. That's why it has to always be stressed that the struggle against imperialism remains the most fundamental struggle of our age. Palestine. Another reason that we, uh, I came to realize that the struggle of the Palestinian people is so central, not only for the Arab world and the Middle East, but worldwide. Not only because they are an in incredible example of resistance, and they lift the spirit in an incredible way. Palestine children are known all over the world now. But also because Israel is important. This Zionist entity is crucial. Crucial in the sense that it is a very important imperialist base. And that imperialist base, 
fights not only the people of the Middle East, it's not only a forward base for imperialism to attack the peoples of the Middle East, to occupy Palestine, to encroach upon uh, other uh, people's homelands in the area, but also Israel is part and parcel of American imperialism. There's this constant debate, does Israel control America or America control Israel? To some extent, it's uh, rather uh, facile discussion. Well, the way I see it is that American imperialism is the dominant power, and it is they who utilize Israel, use it as a forward base, but also additionally to that, and that's why it appears sometimes the other way around, Israeli economy, this Zionist entity's economy existence is solidly linked to U.S. capitalist, imperialist, uh, uh, military industrial complex completely uh, integrated. They are one entity almost in terms of the uh, military industrial uh, organizations that uh, the Zionist entity has created with the backing of world imperialism, especially US imperialism. So the struggle for Palestine is a struggle for all of humanity really, because the way Israel is used, they have over 200 nuclear bombs one nuclear bomb is enough to wipe out half the Arab world. Why do they have 200? Because they are part of the global war strategies of US imperialism. Whether they want, they to, want to attack Russia or China or the entire Middle East or Iran. This uh, 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 Israeli entity is an important cornerstone of world imperialism. That's why all conscious people who are resisting, struggling against imperialism, have to make the struggle of the Palestinian people a primary part of their, of their own struggle and of raising political consciousness. I know I've taken too much time. Thank you for listening. And long live Palestine. <laughs>